Now, if I tell you that I found someone that says something is fake, even though there is clear evidence for it, you'd probably think I'm talking about Hans Wormat or Barnabas Nagy. But today it's Eric Dubay and he's going to tell us that nuclear bombs are fake. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Heinrich, the Real Nuclear Physicist. It's been a while, but I'm back. Let's take a look at none other than Eric Dubay. Are nuclear bombs truly weapons of mass destruction? Or are they really just weapons of mass deception? If they truly were a mass deception, then things like nuclear power plants also wouldn't work. And they would also not exist. As it's just a controlled form of the nuclear bomb. Footage of alleged nuclear explosions, when analyzed with a critical eye, reveal undeniable evidence of photo trickery. Your critical analysis won't be even able to tell an apple from a beach. In much of the early black and white test footage, filmed in the 50s and 60s, and shown on newsreels and fear-mongering films, it is clear we are looking at fake model sets complete with miniature houses, vehicles, and trees. Eric, entire fake cities were built to see what the damage from a nuclear bomb could be. And these include houses, furniture, and mannequins. So yes, some of the dreams might seem fake, but let me guess, that's just part of the entire psyop that everybody's trying to fool you with. Notice the unrealistic and unnatural perfect rows of disproportionately thin trees. After the flimsy model trees are blown to one side, the film quickly cuts to clips of actual trees in some other location. Like I just said, this was deliberate to see how the blast would affect these trees. If it was faked, how? Because you can clearly see a blast wave passing through all of the trees. The first H-bomb test, known as Ivy Mike, looks more like some stop-motion lava lamps than an explosion. The cameras in the 50s shot at a mere 24 frames per second. That's why it might seem like stop motion. If you go and watch a silent film from the same era, they recorded at nearly the same FPS. And that also seems like stop motion. Yet you're not calling the silent film era fake. Many other supposed nuclear tests appear to mix sped up footage of sunrises with real explosions to give the effect of a much bigger blast. You make all these claims and fail to give a single example. You truly are becoming like Barnabas and Hans. If you didn't see it with your own eyes, it must be fake. Suspiciously, in some videos, the explosions are so violent as to obliterate entire houses in an instant. But yet, the camera filming right next to the house survives unscathed and unshook. The blast often comes from behind the camera, and not as they claim, from a protected location far outside the blast radius. At those distances, you don't really need much hardening to withstand the blast. Bunkers and hardened towers would just do fine. You'd see the houses that do get obliterated are fairly soft by building standards, mainly wood. The real problem was closer placement. In the Castle Bravo test, the first thermonuclear bomb, they wanted to get timing data from inside the actual bomb to know exactly how each stage of that detonation occurred. So they stuck pipes into the bomb with various mirrors which allowed light to travel towards the cameras without ever having to place the camera inside of the bomb. What kind of shielded tower would the camera and cameraman have to be enclosed in to survive such a test? There wasn't any need for a cameraman. You could go, start the camera, retreat to a safe distance or to a bunker, detonate the bomb, and then afterwards, with the necessary precautions, retrieve your camera with the film data, and voila, you've got a film of a bomb going off. If nuclear bombs actually exist, 
why would there be a need to fake footage of nuclear explosions? The footage is not fake. The towns are fake. The buildings are staged. The trees are set up because they were testing the bomb. They couldn't go and drop the bomb in the middle of a rainforest to see how trees would react, in the middle of a town to see how buildings would react. They had to set these things up. The Trinity and other nuclear test sites were admittedly first loaded with hundreds or up to a thousand tons of dynamite. Footage exists showing military men stacking gigantic piles of TNT and dynamite at nuclear testing sites. How can you say without a doubt that that is TNT or dynamite? For all you know, it could be bags of cement. It can be anything, Eric. The official reason for this was claimed as, quote, comparative purposes, where the blast from hundreds of tons of stacked TNT would be compared to the nuclear bomb. Have you ever heard of a kiloton bomb? It doesn't mean the bomb weighs one kiloton. It means that bomb has the same energy as a kiloton of TNT. Where do you think this data comes from? With each team sent to separate islands, each stacking piles of explosives, but both told that the other island would have the actual bomb. It would be simple to deceive the very men creating the deception. Were you there, Eric? Did they tell you this? Because remember, if you weren't there, it must be fake. How do you, as a person, go from someone who repeatedly claims that Operation Fishbowl was the American government testing nuclear weapons on the firmament to show that the firmament is indestructible, to now claiming that those nuclear bombs does not exist. That is truly shifting the goalpost. If backpedaling was an Olympic sport, you'd be a multiple gold medal winning athlete, Eric. Mushroom clouds are not unique to so-called nuclear weapons and can be formed with enough TNT, dynamite, regular bombs, and other explosive materials. Please do show me the TNT or dynamite that forms this perfect mushroom cloud. The perfect mushroom cloud is a characteristic of the nuclear bomb. No other bomb explodes like that. Nuclear fission occurs by bombarding uranium-238 with neutrons to split the nucleus and create the isotope uranium-235. During this split, mass is lost and converted into kinetic energy. Yes, that's a very basic explanation of fission, but it does not only occur when you bombard uranium with neutrons. It's also a form of radioactive decay. And yes, that mass is then converted to energy using Einstein's most famous equation, E equals mc squared, which is known as nuclear fission. If each of those neutrons then goes into another uranium nucleus, causing more fission and many more neutrons, this creates a theoretical process known as an explosive nuclear reaction. It's not a theoretical process. It's a process that happens daily in nuclear power plants all across the world. Because without a chain reaction, nuclear power plants could not function. With that said, I'm going to end this year. As Eric has just showed us, he expels words without ever giving them a second thought or a mere Google search. If you did enjoy this video, don't hesitate to hit that like and subscribe button. It does help the algorithm a lot. Comment your favorite emoji as that will also help the algorithm to push my video for more people to see. A huge thank you to my YouTube members and Patreon supporters. If you want to join the team, links are down in the description. Always, I'm Heinrich, the real nuclear physicist, and I'll see you next time.